Hello viewer and welcome to yet another segment of the Society Eye Opener. Today we begin with the 28th of July 1914 when World War One started. It was referred to as the Great War for it lasted four years. After the war, the Paris Peace Conference imposed a series of peace treaties on the Central Powers officially ending the war. In 1919, the Treaty of Versailles created the League of Nations on 28th June. Peace then prevailed for some time. Two decades later, on the 1st of September 1939, beginning with the German invasion of Poland, Britain and France declared war on Germany two days later. This was the beginning of World War II.
marked by mass death of civilians, including the Holocaust and the only use of nuclear weapons in warfare. It resulted in an estimated 50 million to 85 million fatalities. World War II is the deadliest conflict in human history. In an effort to foster peace, the Allies formed the United Nations, which officially came into existence on the 24th October 1945. With 51 nations on board, the League of Nations formally dissolved itself on the 18th April 1946 and transferred its mission to the United Nations. Seven decades later, UN has four global headquarters. Since its completion in 1952, the New York complex has served as the then headquarters of the United Nations. Second headquarters is the UN office at Geneva. Located at the Paris Dis Nation that was constructed for the League of Nations between 1929 and 1938 in Geneva, Switzerland. In the early 1950s and late 1960s, it was expanded to cater for the growing UN population. The Vienna International Center hosts the UN office at Vienna. In 1st January 1980, the third UN headquarters was created in Vienna following New York and Geneva. And last but not least is the United Nations office in Nairobi. The only UN headquarters in Africa and the Global South was established by the General Assembly in 1st January 1996. Hello viewer and welcome to yet another segment of the Society I Opener. In this week's segment, we are privileged to visit a very unique place the UN headquarters in Nairobi, Kenya. UN office at Nairobi is the only headquarters of the UN in Africa, located south of the equator. It's the largest piece of land of the four global offices occupying 140 acres in Gigiri, Nairobi, Kenya. You know, initially when UNEP was created in 1972, uh, the government of Kenya donated this land um, to 100 acres uh, to the UN. And then uh, an additional uh, 40 acres was added later on. Um, so in terms of size, it's, it's, it's increased. I mean, uh, 140 acres, uh, uh, beautiful grounds with all the trees. And we have over a thousand species of trees here and um, uh, it's very green as you can see uh, it's very very environmental friendly and also sits the environmental capital of the world as UNEP is headquartered here on our tour of the UN we join a team of 19 law students from Nairobi University Parklands campus about the UN, basically in my class, uh, public international law. So from that, um, I have a very good foundation or basis on UN matters and its running and operations. At the United Nations Information Center, we are handed over to our tour guide, Divina Sip from Germany. Mm -hmm. 
Her first task is to guide us on how to make use of the headsets. With the headsets, Devina can speak through her microphone and communicate to the whole group without shouting, making the tour more enjoyable and the sound of her voice more clear. After a few minutes of familiarization with the technology, the tour begins. Well, uh, fellow Kenyans, you need to be here. This is the only UN headquarters south of uh, the equator. It shows Kenya as a strategic place in terms of global uh, development that is eco-friendly, environmentally conscious. Actually, this is a mandate from the UN General Assembly. You know, the UN has three other headquarters besides this one. There's New York, the UN headquarters in New York. There's the one in Geneva and also the one in Vienna. Uh, so in uh, 2003, the General Assembly asked the Secretary General then to find out the possibility of having a guided tour here also because all the other three have guided tours where people can go and learn more about the work of the United Nations whilst looking at their working environment and the conference facilities and all that. So in, in 2003, they asked the Secretary General to do a feasibility study and see if it's possible. And then in 2005, they adopted another resolution where they asked the Secretary General to start a guided tour operation here as of 1 January 2006. Uh, but there was some renovation work going on and there was also no funding per se so it delayed the whole uh, process of starting the visitor service until uh, January 2012 uh, when I, I, I came over here to start it. UN consists of 193 member states. The most recent member is South Sudan. Each country is represented by its national flag. The flags flap in unison, but there is a unique feature on the arrangement. Yes, for example, I know that the flags have been arranged in alphabetical order from Afghanistan to Zimbabwe. Then also I've known that the UNON, it is just one of the few headquarters, four in the world, yeah, which is, we are very lucky in Kenya, we have one which is the biggest yeah, in the world. Second stop is the largest conference room that can hold a capacity of 1,000 people. Here, short lectures on the structure and functions of UN are conducted. The special feature we pick up about Kenya is that it contributes 0.013% of the UN general biennium budget of 5.1 billion US dollars. This translates to an estimate of 57 million Kenyan shillings for two years. The percentage which Kenya contributes to the UN, so if you get the 0.01%, in maths you know it is very small, but here when you are told the reality about the budget, then that one, then you can see Kenya contributes a lot of money. I believe also that the information we give is a big selling point for us. A lot of people don't know what the UN is about. They have a lot of misconceptions out there. People um, have questions that they don't have answers for. Uh, so when they come here, they learn more about the organization. We give them a one hour briefing uh, about the various organs of the UN, the structure of the organization, how it all fits in together with UNEP and UN Habitat, the mandates of UNEP and UN Habitat, and, and what the, the role of the organization is in improving our lives. The second conference room with a capacity of 500 is also unique in its own way. Back in December 2004, the 15 member state security council sat in this room for a historic meeting on Sudan in Nairobi.
The other three times that the UN Security Council has sat out of the New York was in 1972 in Addis Ababa, 1973 meeting and in 1990 in Geneva. The Security Council only sits in New York and out of all these times they have only sat out of New York for only four times. One of them happens to be here in Kenya back in 2004 where they sat because of the South Sudan and Sudan and it is out of that meeting that South Sudan held its first referendum.